What is up, everybody? Welcome to the Ham Radio Crash Course. Welcome to Saturday. Today, we're doing the video we were threatening to do last year with Thomas Witherspoon, all about ham radio bags. We found out that we were both kindred spirits in the world of putting stuff in bags and going out there with them, and we have a lot to talk about. Uh, it's going to be fun, because we're going to be geeking out hard about bags. Who knew? But that's a thing, and they're super fun for ham radio. So enjoy the memes while we get things started. Hey everybody. Thanks for clicking on the Ham Radio Crash Course. I must apologize right up front. I have a bit I'm coming off of a cold and I'm a bit congested. So if you see me look away or mute my mic, it's really good that I have somebody I'm talking to today because I'm going to be a little flemmed, a little phlegmy. Guys, uh we I I am uh so excited to do this. We had Thomas Witherspoon on last year. And partially through the the live stream that we did, we we kind of dipped into our interest in in bags. And I think you all know I have like a ton of bags. I've got like a bag for all kinds of different reasons for the season type of stuff. And that's also Thomas, we found out. So I am super excited uh, to chat with him today. A couple of things to note right up front. I did that uh, video on hey there's Thomas I I oh, hold on he'll be big he'll be here in a second <laughs> I did that video on Bouvet Islands expedition and I got a lot of people asking me like what my shirt was and I am was rocking the let's see the QRP collection where is it it's under clothing and QRP tees it's the I have low power t-shirt which is a, a kind of a mock on uh Masters of the Universe type thing. I have low power. Anyway, that's what the shirt came from. So if you're interested, go check that out at hamtactical.com. Helps to support the channel. Also, patches will be back in stock at some point. We had to reorder because uh, they went really, really fast. So thank you, everybody who ordered them. And for everybody that did order them, we sorted out all the shipping stuff. So we actually have a good price on shipping now. So thank you. Now, uh, last thing, actually, a couple more things. But we have the info for the camp out now. So if you want to go on the camp out, we're about half full at this point. It is in Rancho Barona in Ramona, California. It's uh, a campsite that backs up to a poda spot. So it is a poda. And uh, we've got about 40 or so campsites. Like I said, about half are full. The <clears> link <throat> is in the description if you'd like to get in on that. So check that out if you are so inclined, if you're going to be in and around the Southern California area. And shout out again, uh, we're like 33 days out from the QSO Today Virtual Ham Expo. Uh, I will be in attendance. I won't be doing a talk or anything. I've been going to these basically since uh, Eric started them in peak COVID time. I really like them because the talks, I seldom get to go to talks when I'm at a ham fest because I'm like running around saying hi to you all, going to the booths and stuff like that. But uh, the talks that he does are really, really good. And you can watch them from the comfort of your home and you can watch them after the fact, which is really, really nice. So that's why I support it. I think it's like 15 bucks. So uh, there's a link in the description for that as well if, if you're so inclined. I will be there. Uh, oddly enough, we'll mention this too, the Ham Radio Workbench guys also have like a booth there and we kind of hang out in their virtual lounge and last year we had like a really fun kind of just ad hoc talk that kicked off in the lounge area where we're all just sitting out hanging out talking about radio that was really cool so uh speaking of the ham radio workbench want to give a big shout out here thomas witherspoon has joined the team you can see him on one of the episodes where is it right there in the middle uh holiday shopping with thomas k4 wswl so go check them out too good podcast good thing to listen to particularly if you got that huge lawn to mow that's what they say uh for the ham radio workbench it's the it's the podcast you listen to when you mow all of the lawns so last but not least, links in the description to go check out Thomas K4WSWL. I don't know why I keep saying bringing the W forward, but uh, he does a million things. QRP -er, uh, S W S W L post. I think he'll correct me on that, but let's bring him in just so we can start this whole thing up. Thomas, how are you, sir? SWLing.com. See, Josh. I, I wrote that correctly yes. there in your, your lower third. You're a busy guy too. You got a lot of websites. You've got your YouTube channel, and uh, what what 
you know, I think everybody knows you, but why don't you just remind people what you're all about and and kind of give a little background on what you do? Yeah, so I, uh, thanks for having me on here, by the way, Josh. Oh, you're I appreciate welcome. It. Thanks for coming on um, again. It shows a certain lack of judgment, but I still appreciate <laughs> it. And <laughs> so I, uh, I basically, um, I consider myself more of like a blogger or writer. So I write posts on qrp.com, which tend to be everything about field radio, low power radio, ham radio in general, but mostly stuff outdoors. And uh, I also have the YouTube channel where I post my activation videos primarily, which are unedited, uh, unscripted. You see all the warts and everything with it. Uh, sort of, I always say it's a nice cure for insomnia if you have insomnia. <laughs> you and... get a lot of comments in the chat right now. He's got a great radio voice. Uh, you're, you've got that narration with your, with your YouTube style where you're really not on camera very much. It's more about like what you're doing, no. showing the whole thing. And you got a it really is. good voice for narration. So, yeah, Jody's in the chat saying you. we two gentlemen are the reason he spent so much money, or they spent so much money. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, that is that is a danger of the business. Mm -hmm. um, I've been in. I, I I'm sure there are some households where uh, my name's a bad word uh, with <laughs> a spouse. But um, so I also do the SW Welling Post, which is all about shortwave radio listening, international broadcasting, over the air broadcasting in general, pirate radio, all kinds of other things. And that has both of these websites have been going since 2008, so they've been around a little while. And uh, I also have one. That is, I, I have a podcast. I guess you could call it that. It's almost like Do the you? podcast version of my YouTube videos. Yeah, it's the Shortwave Radio Audio Archive. And it is basically just a collection. There's no narration with it or anything. It's a collection of off-air shortwave radio recordings. So huh. these, this has been going on since about 2012. And, you know, like... At I think I, I did know this. that, actually, because um, I think I saw that on SWLing.com. Mm -hmm. I think I remember that. Yeah. And so if you want to get your fill of if you want to listen, like through your podcast player, your uh, iPhone, whatever you have to like genuine, like 1970s, someone recording right off the air, a broadcast of Radio Moscow. That's the place nice. you go to. Very nice. Well, boy, how do we how do we start to ascend this mountain that we, we've <laughs> erected for ourselves? Uh Ham radio it's bags. It's a dangerous thing. Y yeah, it is. It is. So <laughs> I, I think we can both admit, like, you could take any amount of stuff and cram it into a Jansport, and it's a bag. Like, it's a it's a bag. You yeah. could go out and do yeah. all that stuff. But uh, we, we have become particular in, in our time of finding yes. bags that, that speak to us in certain ways. So I think exactly right. we'll just kind of throw it into... I, I was I was poking around with some questions and, and stuff that we could talk about, and I, I sent you a couple of them. But I, I think like I think we start with the big one because oftentimes we end up you know front loading all these conversations and try to fit the most important mm -hmm. thing at the end. So we'll start the first ones. What's your favorite ham radio bag, right? And let's just uh, explore the space. So you know I love all my children, right? Yeah, right. So, that's how. That's. <laughs> yes, I know where you already go with this one. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So I love all my children. It's actually so to me. Okay. So I will say that my love of packs actually has a lot to do with um, uh, w wanting a really nice quality pack. Right. And the reason why is I've been I've actually been on a hike with someone before that got it wasn't a Jansport. Jansports were actually pretty good, but they got like a you know like a big box store cheap uh bag mm -hmm. and we went on a hike and it was like a clamshell opening bag and the zipper failed yeah and so like all of a sudden all their stuff their first aid stuff their food their water all these things they were just struggling to try to keep the bag together the rest of the way down we had to like bungee or do something too i can't remember what we had to to get it together and i just thought i would never want a bag to fail in the field mm-hmm when I go out in the field. So I tend to buy high quality bags, ones that I call like uh, the, the type that you put in your will because you're going to pass them down to your children. You know, they're going to last is, that long. This is the epitome of like kind of buy once, cry once kind of mentality. Ex exactly. For a bag type thing, 100%. Right? Yeah. Okay. And since I live here in the States, I try to buy bags in the States and Canada that are made here because we have some incredible pack manufacturers here and I really like their designs. I like what they do. You pay a lot more for it. You're paying for American wages. You're paying for, you know, materials, everything to be done here. So you're going right. to pay, mm -hmm. but I've never been disappointed. I've never had buyer's remorse. And 
in this pack world, quite often, just like in the ham radio world with, uh, you know how like you, I've always told people like, don't fret so much over buying a radio. If you've got the money to buy the radio and you're uncertain if you're going to like it or not, you can buy it and later sell it. And even if you bought it new, you'll probably sell it for nearly yes. 90% of the value you paid for it, right? 100%. It's not like an iPhone. I, I am in the same boat. It's, it's not depreciate. It, they don't depreciate really radios over time. No. At least we, that's what we're seeing. Evidence not, of that. Yeah. In fact, I, I can't tell you how many times I bought a radio that was used and sold it. I'd find out later on after I sold it later, you know, years later, that I sold it for more than I bought it for to begin with. So packs, these, this, this kind of pack is sort of that way too. You know, when you buy it, there's actually a really healthy sort of market for them used mm -hmm. and you can, you can actually get pretty top dollar for them. So to answer your question, <laughs> all that to say, that's the my build favorite up. pack depends on, it, it depends on the thing I'm doing, right? So it's all about the context. For me, I look at most of my field work as just operating from the car, you know, like pulling up to a, a POTA site, uh, jumping out, going to a picnic table, setting my stuff down there and setting up. There's ones that I do where I'm, I'm going to hike a lot. Like I did today earlier, I went on a soda activation and I hiked a little over maybe four and a half miles or something. And so I take a different pack for that and I pack different gear for that. And then I also have what I would call like my traveling pack. So if I'm doing, when I travel by air, it's always with one bag only. I do not check in anything if I can help it. Ooh. Uh, and that's usually only time I ever, only time I ever check in stuff is if I have to take something like transport something. Right. Otherwise, no way am I going to do it. Right. The and carries, so I have a bag for that. The carry sent a super chat. Recommend a feature rich gray man get home bag. If we might do oh that, yeah, I, I think he's got a couple of we bags that'll that. qualify for that we for sure. That. I, I've got a couple off the top <laughs> that I've got over here sideline that I'm ready at a moment's notice to show you. But let let's keep going with Thomas's favorite that carries. Keep an eye out because we're gonna go through many bags. At least that's the goal. But we know how fast the time yes. goes with Thomas. So <laughs> go ahead, continue, uh, Thomas. Think, so basically, uh, my favorite my favorite bag just in general for like this is your uh, general uh, all purpose bag. Just uh, that I like for QRP radios is the Redox Micromanager, and this is a uh, this is basically like a it's kind of a boxy bag, has these number ten YYK zippers on it. They're really beefy. They're Vislon zippers, and you can field repair them if you want to. The bags you can see inside of it really nicely. It's got a pocket in here for like a tablet or something if you want it that cinches down. There's a, a zippered pocket inside. Uh, you can put connectors and things like that. There's actually, um, it's hard for me to get to it here, but there's another there's another pocket in here. Uh, there's one on the outside. It's padded on the floor. So actually Red Ox, uh, they're based in Billings, Montana. Wonderful company. And they started out making gear for the railroad, uh, for people who work on the railroads. Oh, and okay. they started branching out and doing more, like they do a lot of overlandy type uh, mm -hmm. bags and things. Uh, overlanders really like their stuff and it's guaranteed for life. Like literally if, if a bulldozer rolls over this and destroys it, I send it to them and they either repair it or send me a new one. And, uh, this particular bag, they actually contacted me. I was, I was a customer of theirs. Yeah, that's it. I was a customer of theirs, uh, pretty early on. And I, I kept asking them, can you, can you find me a bag that is padded? You know, the floor is padded, uh, you know, the sides would be, and, like a year later, they contacted me like, Thomas, we got one we're working on. We want you to check it out before we put it in production. Maybe you can make some comments. And it was this bag, uh, mm. the micromanager. And so actually that was in 2016. And I actually used a micromanager to house all of my national parks on the air gear, which oh. was my, my little KX, my little KX2 low pro, you know, pack that they've had forever. Yep. This has basically the entire kit in it. And I slipped it in that into that bag with a log book with a ba extra battery if I needed it and a few extra supplies. And that's what I use for national parks on the air. Now, how big of a laptop, really well. how big of a laptop can you fit in this or do you even bother with the micromanager? You really can't fit. You yeah. can't really, you can't Looks really like fit a tablet. That. It's really for tablets and things. <laughs> yeah. It would comfortably fit like probably, I don't know if I've tried a full size iPad in here or not. I've got to think if I have or not. And, uh, but you know, like an iPad mini, some of those types of uh, tablets, it would fit really nicely. You're generally the, a, uh, a paper logger too for radio, right? 
I do. I usually log onto an electronic device on the side oh, if okay. I can, just to save the pain of transcribing later. Right. Though I don't like doing it, because, but I still prefer paper, especially with CW. Yeah. To be honest, single sideband goes so quickly that mm -hmm. I almost have to just log on paper and nothing else or log on electronic uh, device and nothing else. I can't do both. It right. just goes too quickly for me. But um, but yeah, so that's one. Now, if I'm going to if I'm going to do like a soda activation or something, let me see if I can pull up. I'm going to share my screen. Is oh, that yeah. Okay? Yeah. Go for it. OK, so let me see if I can just share my whole desktop here and then go here to uh, my photos. Can you see this? OK, yeah. OK, good. So this pack is my. Uh, is my uh, Spec Ops brand uh, THE Pack EDC? It's a, like kind of a long name for it, like V Pack EDC. Mm -hmm. And Spec Ops is a company in Texas, and they make all their stuff in Texas and design it there. They're really their their main market is the military market. Mm -hmm. And so I first found out about them actually on an Air Force base. I, I'm not military, but one of my best friends is uh, he's in the Air or was in the Air Force. Um, uh, National Guard. And I found them in like one of the base stores. And I was like, holy cow, tell me more about this stuff. And uh, looked it up and their stuff is just bulletproof and incredibly rugged. But the great thing about this particular bag is on the top, you can't see it from this photo, but at the very top, uh, right next on either side of the handle, the grab handle on the top, there are two Velcro pieces that pull up and you can put antennas in there because this was designed oh. not only to like for like one of them to be like a hydration thing but for the other one to be for antennas because these could be used for radio packs oh, that's in fantastic. the military so i like it and they're about you know i think about a hundred eighty dollars like 179 dollars guaranteed for life made in the u.s and i'm telling you they are just insanely rugged they're not the lightest weight thing in the world but they're crazy rugged now this molly probably all over them. Yeah, this probably doesn't qualify as gray man because of the molly uh, on there and, no. the, and the then the army green, you know, the the olive drab kind of green color. But I I totally love the 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 layout yeah. of it with the two large outside pockets and then the it's probably got a big internal pocket. Is that how it works? It has a big internal pocket and then yeah. one zippered uh, mesh pocket inside along the inner wall of mm -hmm. it. So you can kind of organize things inside in a kind of a modular way, which we maybe talk about a little bit later. And that's usually what I do with this pack. On the outside, the bottom the bottom outside pouch is my first aid kit, my coffee kit, and just other emergency supplies. The top one are, is sort of my shared field radio accessories. So okay. like an extra key, uh, RG316, things like that. Right. Um, but this is what, this is how I use it in the field too. I can, I kind of use it to prop up my radio sometimes when I'm doing soda activations and things. And I love this pack. Uh, it's, it's a fantastic one. Th this is another now, good reason to have oh, go you on because uh, you actually use your pack as like an operating position often. Like the pictures we saw, you literally are mm -hmm. operating from here too. So this gives you kind of an extra yeah. bit of info is that mm -hmm. a lot of the times when you're looking at a bag, you're thinking of how to incorporate it when you're literally sitting on your butt and around some leaves and stuff in some cases, right? Yeah. And when I get a bag, I plan to use it. Like thoroughly use it. Uh, it's not going to just sit around in the house because I, I kind of, this one actually was kind of serendipitous. The one negative with this type of pack that are made by smaller companies, kind of cottage industry companies, in a sense, you know, you don't find them in Target and Walmart and things. Oh, right. The uh, the the negative about them is you can't often try them on before you buy them because you're buying them, you know, uh, sight unseen, and they you measure it up and do everything, but you know it's going to be good quality. And this one was just like I got it, and I thought, oh my gosh, this is going to be like one of my favorite packs ever. For radio stuff. I'm so glad you mentioned that because that's always been uh, one of the reasons why I end up getting probably where I have too many packs in rotation is just how they carry mm -hmm. because you don't really know right. until you have it and you can't walk around a store with an empty pack and get the same feeling of what it's going to be like to hike in it or just carry it all day right. long until you put some weight in it and mm -hmm. actually walk around. Then all of a sudden the, the straps and then you're like, I don't like this. This is, yeah, it's not good. Uh, so yeah, I, I hear where you're going with that for real. That That's a good point. Yeah. And that's, that's exactly what, and this pack I've ended up using it a lot with POTA and everything else. I just kind of use it as my main pack these days for any time I could be doing 
a, a trail side activation because a lot of times I will uh, when I'm out and about. If it, even if I go to a park, I, I implement a little hiking, and then sometimes I just do my radio stuff while I'm hiking. Now the gray man one. Oh, here this we is go. the one I really love for that. Oh yes, and this is the the Tom Ban. This is the Tom Ben Synapse Twenty Five. And I actually, so this is a picture I took in Quebec last year uh, in Quebec City. And when we went, we went there for two months, the family, we just like went there for the entire summer. And the, when I went there, I, we had no room. We were like driving up in my Subaru Forester. So we all packed very lightly. I did hide like quite a few radios in places that I could find <laughs> in the car. But uh, <laughs> I was, I was telling all my family, yeah. I was like, no, you know, only like one bag and this and that, because we're going to travel lightly and they know who I am. I'm like really militant with this. And then I like, as I was loading the car the day before we left, I pulled up the, in the, uh, uh, in the back part of the car, like in the trunk area, I pulled it up, you know, where the spare tire is. Mm -hmm. And then I thought, oh my gosh, there are all these really cool nooks and crannies in here where I could stick radios. So I stuck like three or four more radios <laughs> in there. <laughs> where some people would put their firearms in their car hidden. Uh, you've got radios yeah. hidden. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm, packing, gonna... I'm packing an MTR 3B. I'm going to pull up the website really quick. Uh, so Tom Ben is yeah. linked in the description. And so did you say the Synapse? Is that is the, the one? The Synapse 25 yeah, so is this one. Right here, and this orange one. You're still sharing. If it, Just hang on for the sharing, and I'll come back to you in a second. So there, there are linked. Mm, I'm going to yeah. go back to Tom so that he can keep going. But uh, just so you, you can maybe browse Tom Ben while we're talking because uh, they are really good bags. But go ahead, Tom. Yeah, these are made in Seattle, and they're oh. incredible. They're, they're some of the best travel bags you'll ever find. The uh, let's see this one. The cool thing about this bag. So this is very great, man. I was just in fact, I was just telling um, Josh uh, just right before this, mm -hmm. uh, that we started this, that one of the things I really like about Tom Ben bags is, you know, I don't want to take a tactical looking bag into Manhattan or someplace right. like I just feel like it's really out of place and going into an airport and everything. Tom Ben bags just disappear because the cool thing about this particular pack design is all of the outer zippers that you see there, there's one, two, three, four, five outer pockets on the front. They designed that bag so that each one of those pockets doesn't interfere with anything or intrude on other pocket areas. So if you stick something really bulky in one of the pockets, it doesn't take away area from any other pocket in the bag, really. And they, they, it's just super clever because, you know, sometimes you'll have a bag and you'll put stuff in a pocket and then that takes up like a third of your main space that you mm -hmm. needed to use for something else because it just bulks out into it. Yeah. It won't do that with this bag. Also, when you wear it, it looks smaller than you, even when you have it really loaded out. This is about as loaded out as I ever have it in this photo here. And even when you have it really loaded out, it doesn't look it on your back. And it always qualifies as a personal carry-on item on an airline. So <laughs> me being cheap, if I'm going, you know, with like a carrier that would charge extra and I just only travel with one bag, I always just use like a personal carry-on size bag. Now so. that's, that's all. So that's a 25 liter when they say 25, that's right. implying loadout. So for those of you that are, you know, know some of the bag space, they're generally talking about capacity when they mention a number. 25 is a great day bag size i'm imagining that's kind yes. of what you generally in a travel bag too if you've got a you know a side you know bag that you're carrying along with you but you, you travel you know all on your back it sounds like so do you, do you have a yeah what's your what's your big bag you have a big bag too that you so actually this is interesting i just ordered one oh. i decided i decided for my longer soda hikes i really wanted something with proper suspension i love my uh spec ops bag and I love using it, but it's just a little, um, you know, it's just like, a, it's just a little bulky and heavy mm -hmm. if I'm going on a really long hike. I mean, I did like, like about four and a half miles today and it was a wonderful day for hiking and it wasn't a big deal at all. But when I've done like 11 mile hikes, I'm feeling it a bit more because I don't have a hip belt or anything. Yeah. So I've just ordered and I'm hoping I'll like it. Uh, the mystery ranch scree 32, which is a 32 liter larger day pack. And, um, uh, and I like Mystery Ranch stuff in general, and I'm thinking that the suspension will work for me. Somebody sent me a link that uh, Mystery Ranch did a collaboration with like a designer bag company. 
and they wanted me to buy it for Leia. Oh, really? So I've actually got to find the link for it and show Leia and see if she likes it because it, <laughs> this is a long running gag on this channel that, or maybe if you listen to the podcast, every time I buy a radio, <laughs> she mental takes a mental <laughs> note of how much I've spent and it's going to go to a handbag purchase of some large number in the future. Um, so these are like That's your nice. right. These are like your uh, you're going to do a bit of hiking. You already mentioned mm -hmm. coffee bag, part of the essentials, of course. Your first aid, all yep. that stuff. So the, you you kind of uh, are are looking for bags that kind of you can bring more than just the radio. Often, right? You're going to have all the right. the ten essentials if if you're in that mindset, right? Mm -hmm. um, do you have like do you go with ever a modular approach for some things like you already had the low pro bag up where you've got like a a bag within a bag type mm -hmm. of thing and then do you have recommendations for that like what you really like yeah 100 percent. because basically my bags tend to be either modular or fully self-contained and so so just to tell you like uh so on the modular approach like this you know this is the like you said this is the uh kx shack in the box kx2 bag yep Yep. You know, and it, it literally, literally mm -hmm. like mine is, this is probably messy. Cause I just, I packed this up so quickly after my soda activation, uh, it's still got leaves and pine needles mm -hmm. in it. Um, but basically this has, uh, you know, a random wire antenna. It's got a 25 meter throw line and it with a throw weight, my radio, my, I've got an extra log book in it, my key, my BNC binding post adapters, some headphones, actually have the cord for the KXPA 100 um, amplifier, which I'd never really used. Mm -hmm. And then some assorted adapters in here. And so that's the whole thing. You know, everything's in here to do an activation just in this little bag if I want to. But I still put it in. It's like my soda bag that I took out today, even if it was only a four and a half mile hike. Mm -hmm. I still take my first aid kit and things like that. And it, you just need space for that stuff. Water yeah. takes space. And, and actually probably two thirds of the weight of my bag, if not more, is just all the extra stuff I take with me. Do, do, uh, do you rock the AX1 in that bag too? I've got my AX1 crammed in that little KX2 bag. I can. I can. I just bought a second AX1. <laughs> well, have you seen I'm the little itty bitty one? Little thing. The little itty bitty one? Yeah, that I just got an AX2. I, I yes. almost... I almost was going to get one at Hamcation, but I don't think they had them on site. And I, I, I wasn't able to spend much time in that mm -hmm. booth. And, and Eric was there. So I, I normally try and say hi when I see him. But they were busy and I was mm -hmm. running around like crazy. So I didn't get I didn't get it. That happens a lot when you go to Hamfest. You'll you know, you're going to I don't oh, yeah. know if I should spoil what we're, what Hamfest you're going to. You can mention it if you want to. But um, it, you know how it goes is you, you start talking to everybody and you get sidetracked and it just it gets crazy. Um, yeah, well, I don't get a lot done. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't know how the best to, to crack this one because I, I know this is definitely an area we want to go into. So now you, you talked about your kind of your all in one, all in one. Oh, you know, the well, bag has actually, all the things. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. So, so, so with the modular. Approach, okay. There we go. I, I just saw what I was looking for. Yeah. I, <laughs> this is just like, this is, you just, you scrape the surface of this. Yeah. Gosh, yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. 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 Gosh. You're going to regret having mm -hmm, me on here. Mm -hmm. So like, this is another, so this is another little pack. This is another little Tom Ben bag. I've got like a million of these. So I bought things like this for my wife. I've gotten her Red Ox stuff. Mm -hmm. I almost every time I buy a pack, I'll like buy her one too. Oh, that's nice. And she's like, great, another pack. But she's, she's a bit of a pack person actually herself. She likes to organize things. And I'm Excellent. sort of the same way. So this one is actually my ATU pack. This has an Elecraft T1 in it. It has a little, like probably two foot, section of uh rg 316 this may be three feet and um uh, you know this is my t1 in a, right. a toothton case uh and what is a two i've got a spare case? battery what's in there what's it wait what, what's so so it's toothton is the name of the uh company and i probably can't uh put this up here where you can see it easily. oh yeah i see it yeah it's t-u-f-t-e-l-n that's joshua uh k-o-4-a-w-h and uh, he's a fantastic guy. He does some great designs, a lot of 3D printed designs and things. In fact, the um, I've used several of his antennas. He makes like a NFED half wave. He makes random wire antennas of various sorts. He even made this one. We actually went to the W4 Soda camp out in North Georgia last year, and we shared a campsite. And so I got to know jo uh, Joshua really well. And I was asking him, you know how we, with the KX2, uh, we use these uh, BNC binding post adapters on the side of them. Yep. And yeah, Kyle, you're right. Josh does have some in incredible designs, three designs. 
well, I like this. And I use it all the time with like a just a 28 and a half foot wire uh, mm -hmm. antenna. But I asked Josh, I said, I want something a little lower profile. And uh, and I said, can you make one that has the BNC uh, connector, but it's low profile? And he made this. So this is 28 and a half foot of 26 gauge, really nice slick oh, yeah. wire. That's a 28 foot, uh, 28 and a half foot radiator, 28 and a half foot counterpoise and and then like the BNC and on the back of the BNC, I can't really pull it out easily here because it's all wound up, but the back of it's just really simple and small and low profile because if I drop it, when I'm holding my radio on my knee board, I don't want the leverage of this against the radio and everything. So mm -hmm. for picnic tables and stuff, this is fine. And I've used it plenty of times since so do activations too, but, but basically, yeah. So I have packs for this. So I've got like a pack for my battery pack. I've got, mm -hmm. I've got one for, um, I've got like a central, like this is another thing. Oh, I, really I love, I love that tray. This is the travel I, I tray. No, the tray. The tray is so good. How many do you have? I, I have the small one and I'm going to buy the large one. That's the large one, right? Oh my goodness. Yeah, this, <laughs> so I probably good. have a dozen of these. Really? Every time I put in a Tom Ben order. Oh gosh, every time I put in a Tom Ben order, I'll like buy a new one. <laughs> I am coming I off of a cold. I apologize again, guys. I, we we should we should mention too. This is literally us geeking out on bags. Like we're not affiliated with any of those companies. We're not making any money no, on this. No. <laughs> this is all just us. we should be, shouldn't we? <laughs> you should for sure, because you got me hooked on Tom Bin. But should, okay, hold oh, hold the hold the bucket up because so, I don't think people understand. It's it, it looks like it's just a bucket, right? But there's a there's a there's a catch. So here's what happens. So you can put something in it like you put this. This is designed. This is designed for travelers, right? Right. And this is where I first started using it. You get this thing and it can flat pack in your pack. I mean, you just throw it in your it's pack however you amazing. want to. Yep. When, you, when you get to a hotel, you open it up like this mm -hmm. and then you throw your, your keys and your wallet and all the stuff dump. you don't want to misplace. Yep. Right? You pocket mm -hmm. dump. And then if you're leaving in a hurry because you're late for your flight, you pull the top up on it like this. You cinch it shut and you throw it in your bag like that. And it's all there. Like if you've got things, just extra cords and things like that, you can dump it in here, throw it in your pack, and it's all going to be there when you travel, which is great. And I use these for a lot. I mean, a lot of ham radio stuff like this one. This black one here is for my TX500 accessories. I've got one, a uh, small one like you have, Josh. Actually, I use that for my smaller throw line my uh two millimeter throw line and i've used that thing for probably a year and a half now it's done a great job as a throw line bag so there was a couple of comments in the chat that the links weren't there for some reason so i'm quickly uh grabbing links and dropping them in there and i'm going to update the show notes so i apologize for everybody but they'll at least be in there for those of you that are watching after the show um speaking of after the show Thomas is going to join us for a little while on the after chat. So if you have questions, uh, the link is in the description. I know that link is there for our Discord. And that's how you get in on all the fun that we do over on the Discord side. So you can join us over there to talk about bags or just any ham radio questions or anything along those lines. And um, we'll, we would love to, to have you join us over there. So he'll be joining us yeah. for at least a little while. Okay, so I've updated the links. I think I got it. And I put it under recommended bags by Thomas, and I included everything you mentioned, including some of the bags. <laughs> we did get a super chat from the Trucking Ham. Oh. Here's enough to get a four pack of Dragon's Milk. Nice to meet you at Hamcation. Thank you, the Trucking Ham. I appreciate it, man. Thank you so much. And it was good to meet all of you at Hamcation. It was a lot of fun. Um, but so you 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 saw the drawstring action, right? So that's like a mm -hmm. that that's turned in like a dirty clothes bag for me at the end of a trip. Uh, mm -hmm. that's like, if you have something that you don't really want to just be flopping around inside your bag, you throw that in there and then you can kind of close the bag on top of it. Or it's just useful to just take out in the field. If you've got just like a lunch or whatever, it's super multi-purpose. It's a, it's a great, uh, I, I don't it think is. they're really cheap. They're we like have... 15 bucks, right? Or something like that. I don't remember. No, they're like, well, they're like between 20 and 25, depending on the size you're getting. But again, like this thing's guaranteed for life. They're really well-made and and I, I use them like I have a I have one I keep in my bag. You talk about the modular thing. So I have one that's like, uh, like I said, this one, this black one, I throw my TX5. I have different colors for all of them so I can find them really quickly and use them. But I have one that is basically just a um, it's for like I keep like a whole bag. I keep all the extra accessories except for an ATU in this one bag. So if I'm grabbing a new radio, like right now I'm testing the um, 
Shigu G106 again. Uh, it's like an updated version of it. Oh. And so I don't have all the, the stuff for it. So I have this one bag. I throw the G106 in one. I make sure I've just got the power cord for it and then throw this in there. And then I know I've got everything I need for my activation. I'm not going to find that I'm missing something, you know. Yeah. So I like using these. Uh, that That's a really good... For the modular fridge. Jody had a good comment. Sounds like the, the beginning of a new bag rating system from one cry to five cries. That's <laughs> that's how how good it is. Or, or, I mean, how expensive it is, too. Because that, uh, the, some of these are no joke. Like, it is true. Like, you're, you're, mm. you're looking at spending well over a hundred dollars for a good bag and again it, oh, yeah. it's something that's not going to fall apart on you and something that's not going to hurt you when you carry it that's the big thing for me is that like mm -hmm. i i've got a messed up shoulder and a bad knee and i generally try and pack in ways that i'm not going to be debilitated for the next two days right. after carrying it kind of thing so that that's one of my mm -hmm. big things uh, Cameron G. Oh God, time to Tom. T time to buy Tom Bin stuff for Hamvention <laughs> organization. Only bringing a carry on. Oh, the the carry on. Oh that's, yeah, yeah. That that's tough. I did that. I did that with a Peak Design Traveler thirty liter for mm. Hamvention about a year ago. And because you know I'm I'm dragging a bunch of camera gear, so I like Peak Design because it's that modular camera setup. Um, but you can also put radios in that. In fact, my my go my EDC bag that I carry most days is is Peak Design, so I may have to show that later once Thomas is. Uh... So this this is like since we're talking about this, and I promise I'll keep this short. I no, 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 it's like you no, got time that's for why me that's why we're here. That's why we're here, man. Now this is like the KX one of the bag world. The KX it's hard to get. Oh, okay, okay. It's so, discontinued. So don't it's hard to don't get. try and fight it. Is what you're telling me. <laughs> this is called the Tongbin Stowaway. They made this. I don't know, four years ago or so. Mm -hmm. And they made it for maybe only a year. And I'm, I was surprised they didn't keep making it. This is a small, this is a personal carry on size bag. It holds, it has like, a, you know, like a zippered front with three compartments in it. It has this open zippered place here that actually has room that you can stick a whole like water bottle in. and Tom Ben stuff. I don't know how they do it, but they just, it swallows everything. And then it has one large area in the back where you can you can actually put like a big packing cube in with clothes mm -hmm. and two two side pockets here as well on the back. And one year I was going to a so convention, you got that, you got that convention. Pretty well stuffed too, from what it looks like. It looks like you got a lot of gear in there. From right yeah. now, it is. Yeah. I threw a whole bunch of stuff in here before I left. And so one year, I think it was 2019 or so, I was going to uh, a radio convention in Philadelphia. And I took, I think it was Frontier Air or one of those. I'd never flown them before, but they had this big thing like, you know, if you come here and you arrive and you have something bigger than a personal carry on, you're going to pay a lot of money right. at the gate. So they were trying to encourage me. And I looked at the specs for it and I was like, nah, I can do this. And it was a one week thing. I was doing a presentation with it too. So I had a presentation. I need to bring my presentation gear and everything, but I like wow. to travel lightly. So I took this for a week. Wow. And so when I showed up at the airport, a buddy of mine met me there and he's like, where's your stuff? And I was like, this is it. And the That's cool thing impressive. about this bag, no, this is, this is what makes it so interesting. So it has a ton of zippers on it. This zipper, if you undo this zipper here. It's a transformer. It is a backpack. <laughs> no! It is a backpack. <laughs> it is a transformer. It oh is. my God. <laughs> it's totally a transformer. You weren't expecting that, were you? I, was, I like did this. not expect that. I thought it would like hang or something like yeah. that. I didn't expect. Uh... No. <laughs> That's awesome. It's not, not the most amazing. Do, do they not do that anymore? Sorry. Because they, they have the like uh, segmented zipper spots on a lot of their bags. Oh, that's hilarious. You know, I'm wondering. I, I don't know why they stopped making it. In fact, these are now like I could probably sell this for way more than they, they ever probably, sold it for originally. Because yeah. And it's a, uh, but I never will. I love this bag. And I've actually used, it looks a little weird as a backpack because it's like in two sure. halves. Yeah, yeah, of, yeah. But I have actually, I've had it, that one trip I did where I was living out of it for a week, it was pretty packed. And sure, yeah. I opened it up. So when I was in the airport and I was walking around with a backpack on and, you know, I really liked it. But <laughs> I think that's really cool. That's really cool. And so modular is one thing yeah and the other thing is like total you have one like this don't you i i have a couple in fact I, i've got a whole thing here so i'll, I'll show that i've got the, the i want to see i got the the what is that the handy little thing in the middle and then the packing cubelet mm -hmm. with the strap 
And then somebody mentioned fanny mm-hmm. packs before we got started, and so I, I did drag out my favorite fanny pack that I carry. Uh, we'll we'll get into that if we have enough time. Otherwise, we'll 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 take that on the after chat. But this this bag is what got me started on Tom Bin, and it was from your uh, the video you when you were on with me last year. Uh, this is like the coolest thing, and I figured we could we could easily spend the last twenty minutes just talking about this. Uh, that's the totally. handy little thing, right? Or the, is that? Is that what it is? Yeah. What you were holding up? Yeah, the HL. They call it the HLT. Yeah, the HLT. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, why don't you just? I don't know how to begin this one either, because there is so many things you can do with this. So, uh, go for it. Explore. Explore the bag. So, what I really like about it, I bought one. Actually, you know, um, I'll show you a little bit about this one, and I'll share the screen again and show you some yeah, photos yeah, yeah. that I have. Absolutely. But this is basically a fully self-contained radio kit around my MTR3V. Yeah. So, okay. well, first of all, I should say, when I say fully self-contained, I mean, you can, I think a lot of people will consider it a complete bag when they have their radio, the battery, a key or mic and all those things in it, but they don't think about their antenna and deploying their antenna. They may have an antenna in there, but they're not thinking about deploying it. Right. Where I live, trees, trees are what I use because we have tons of them uh, here in you know, Western North Carolina. And so this bag actually has a full 25 meter uh, has a full 25 meter throw line with a throw weight uh, that's in here and it attaches inside the bag. So, so like when I take it out, 25, I found that 25 meters. So I buy this Marlowe two millimeter Marlowe throw line. Uh, it's made the UK, I think mm-hmm. very, it's pretty affordable actually. And it comes in like a 100 meter spool. So I cut it oh, in nice. half. And I've, I've given some to friends uh, doing that. And then I get like a little eight ounce weight, maybe a 10 ounce weight. And uh, and these are made by Weaver. And that's the only brand I recommend for, yep. for throw weights. I have to say that throw weights, I've had several people tell me that these are not fun to take through TSA um, when you're flying and stuff. Like I, the, I, these will did I, make did machines I, go off. Did I tell you my story on that one? No. I, so I... I packed it to go to a ham fest i don't know why i brought it to this day i I don't know why i brought that weaver throw weight i think i left it in my bag it's bright green Mm -hmm. it's got a big ring on the end of it that you can easily slide your finger Mm -hmm. through and so i wasn't thinking about it and the tsa agent comes up to me and he has his finger through it and he's like slapping his hand with it and i'm like oh man that like could totally be like an improvised blackjack like you could oh. you could knock somebody out with that thing and he's he's wow. he's like kind of going like this in his hand and he goes he saw the rest i i get pulled out of line all the time and he's got radios <laughs> laid out everywhere antennas he goes so you're into ham radio and he's doing this the whole time like you know slapping his hand so you're into ham radio right and i'm like yeah 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 he's like i'm i'm going to retire soon and i'm like i'm thinking that's a really good hobby and i'm like oh it's a fantastic hobby oh, awesome. regardless of you know being retired or not but absolutely and and i, I told mm-hmm. him like this is actually my portable uh setup and i'm like i notice you have my my throw weight i use that to get it into trees and he's like oh that's what this is for he's like yeah this is a little odd to take on an air plan i'm like uh yeah i can see that now that you mention it um <laughs> um but it worked out because he was he, he was a he, he was a ham nerd and he didn't know it or he was ambitious as we like to call it um or ham curious but i was like oh yeah what he's he's literally popping that thing in his hand 12 ounces a shot that's what they're carrying you could totally yeah. knock somebody mm-hmm. out with that thing i'm like oh yeah i'm yeah, probably, probably not could. gonna pack this again that's for sure <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was thinking about that. So I had the, the thought hadn't crossed my mind, and I guess I've never taken a, a throw weight on an airplane before. I have taken uh, some line and stuff, but I think when I did that before, I was using like a, I was using something like a lead weight or something for fishing. Mm-hmm. I can't remember because I was going for something really small and lightweight. There's a lot but, of little um, stuff sacks, yeah. like for uh, little stuff sacks, like inflatable pillows and whatnot. Like if you're hiking, that like are really small and they have a lanyard on it. I've used mm-hmm. those as throw weights. I just fill them full of rocks and you know do the thing. Uh, but lead is best because it, you know, it, t- it takes up a small it thing. Does. And, and those weaver teardrops kind of just fall right through trees because they're they do dense and heavy. Yeah. Yeah, and that's okay. So Joshua is actually leaving a comment. Joshua is the guy behind Tufton, the company I was talking about. Great guy. That's him. And uh, he does a lot of travel, so he's he says he's taken it through TUS, TSA, and sometimes they ask and sometimes not. I can so. imagine. <laughs> I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised. But anyway, keep going with that handy little thing because it's amazing. <laughs> So when you open it up, like it, there's just so much organization in this thing. It's crazy, and I have. 
what I like to do is use a, um, um, and, and actually, uh, in terms of battery, I like to use a KX, what's it called? A KX BT2, the KX2 battery. I use it on a lot of, uh, yes. of my smaller radios. They're great. It works brilliantly for that. And so I have my MTR3B in here, just in this really simple um, kind of like cover. That's all I have really on it. And uh, I love this thing. And so easy to pack away. And I also carry like everything I need, my adapters and things for cooking it up to batteries. I have an extra key in here. Um, I have uh, just everything I need. Everything's everything's here. Actually, I've got the, uh, what's it called? I haven't That's taken this wallet. one to the field yet. This is a wallet. And this is another thing about Tom Ben is they make these O-rings and everything. So you can clip things onto each other so they don't fall out when you open your bag. And these are the, uh, are they called the TP3 or something? Bamaki? Uh, they're made I, in Germany, and I've I don't know, them. but I love the look of them. I love that plexiglass yeah. top on those keys. That's amazing. They're very nice, very rugged for sticking in a little bag like this. And I've also found I love these extendable three and a half millimeter oh, yeah. audio cables. Yeah, you know, those save a lot of space and keep the wire mess down. But the cool thing about it is, so like just with this, I throw this in my bag, and I know I got my whole station here, and I really like that. Uh, and so hold, I've actually done one for my. Mm -hmm. Hold it up again, really quick, and and uh, show the the loop on the bottom that you can shove your hand in when you open it. Yeah, so, that's, so that... you can actually hold it like this. So yep, when you open it, you can you can hold it very easily. It's just so smart. Like yeah, and I've I've got one. I have one in my EDC pack that I use for everything else. Let me. I'm going to share the screen real quick yeah, and please. show you a couple of photos. And uh, let's see. Here we go. Oh, okay, yeah. Let's see here. By that way, that handy little thing is great for uh, significant others and their makeup. Uh, somebody was mentioning that in the chat. Like, perfect. Yes. That's a, a fantastic idea. Uh, there is all kinds of uses for that handy little thing. And I'll tell I, you, there are two sizes. And for ham radio stuff, you really need to go for the larger size, the HLT2, the handy little thing to do. The, the one is fantastic and probably great for like your wife or significant other who wants to use it for makeup or something. It's perfect for that, the smaller one. But for the larger one, it's you just need that little extra space to fit in the things for a full kit, I find. And um, so this is this is the way that that kit looks when it's uh, you know laid out when I was taking photos. This is my EDC pack that I carry this HLT2 in my EDC pack all the time. So I've got everything in there. I don't like going without my um, fork and spoon. <laughs> that because I can't tell you how many times I've like gotten a salad or something. And I get to the car and I'm like, wait a minute, I don't have anything to eat this with. So I've always always carry that with me. I've got this German knife that I picked up that uh, back when we lived in Munich, and uh, it has a, like a fork on one end. You can pull it apart. It's just great for eating. That's I a proper a hobo knife. Pad in there. That's what they call that a it's hobo awesome. knife when it splits in part like that. So yeah. you have to. Yeah, it's really cool. I didn't know that actually. Yeah. And uh, I have a precision uh, screwdriver set in the blue thing that you see there. Uh, this is a, a really nice American-made precision screwdriver set. And I mean, I highly recommend it. And you can buy that on Amazon. I can't think of the name of it now, but I can look that up later and get a link to it. But it's really nice. And uh, it's very high grade, high tensile strength and all that. So I use this all the time. I also like to carry this big OPNL knife with me because we like to do a lot of travels and we'll stay in Airbnbs and stuff. And most of the time their knives just aren't very sharp. And that one's big enough. I can like cut a watermelon with it if I really want to. And I use it for cooking. There you go. <laughs> I'm actually I like to nerd out on this. I'm actually trying to find the the uh, link for the uh, handy little thing so we can pull that up too when we're done, because uh, I think people would want to see the website for that. But the website's linked, so make sure you uh, you go check that out. I will tell you, there's I I do like these for the modular thing. Going back to that really quickly, and I'm going to try to be conscious of time here. <laughs> no, no, it, and we the, go uh, over. It's okay, and nobody's going to freak out. In fact, I think uh, a lot of people are enjoying this. So yeah, go for it. So these are made of Cuban fiber, or it's called like Denima. I yeah. think is the name of it. Yep, yep. A friend, a friend of mine had introduced me to that a few years ago, and he was actually making some bags. He stopped doing it. I bought these on Etsy. I can't think of the name of the uh, seller, but I, I like to use these for containing. Like that's my first aid. These are like my emergency supplies that are in here, and I keep everything like emergency stuff in this in my pack. So 
when I'm even doing, like if I move out of my main pack, my main soda pack into another pack, but I'm like, you know, I need to take my first aid kit or my coffee kit or something. They're all in separate little Dyneema bags. So I can just grab one, throw it in the bag and move on. I, I like to keep everything modular like that. That way nothing gets left behind. And I know how everything's packed. So I kind of have this like pack memory. I don't know if you do Josh. Oh yeah. Josh, but, yes. but, uh, Josh, yes. but it's like, it's, um, I have this pack memory and I actually tell people that really what they need to do is try to load their pack in the dark sometime. Mm -hmm. And if you can load your pack in the dark and not miss anything on the floor, then, you know, your pack really well. Mm -hmm. And that's important. You know, the, uh, I love those. I love those packs. Here's another HLT too. I've got, because of course one's not enough. Oh yeah. And, and they uh, have a, uh, so one. many cool colors too for them. So there's definitely something for they everybody. Do. That's the toughest part, isn't it? You're like ordering it. And you're like, ah, oh, what color? Oh yeah. And I could, I can spend like two days. And if you're not careful, like a color will go out while you're looking for it. Uh, but this has like my SW3B in it. And uh, I've actually, sometimes I'll replace out the radio and put a different, you know, small radio in it. But I, I really like this. I, I really love those. The um, there is a there's actually a bag I'm experimenting with right now, and this is a company we haven't talked about yet. So I'll mention them really quickly. They're from Canada, and it's called CP Gear Tactical, and their stuff is very much made for the Canadian military. So they don't really have like much of anything that beyond just what they do for the Canadian military. Mm -hmm. And uh, Rod on the ham radio workbench had introduced me to this company last year in the summer or something. And I was looking at it and he said, you know, I have one of their flight bags and it's like for, you know, like a, an airman to use. And it's, it's fantastic. Actually the uh, inside of it, this is the name of the company, CP gear tactical. And they make all their stuff in Canada. Some of it is also made in the U S and I've actually got, so I was kind of inspired by um, Gaston, uh yeah is it kt6run i always forget yes. his uh the first two letters uh, of his call sign i don't know if it's six it might be kt5 i could be wrong five okay uh he's sorry about that somebody will correct us in the um, chat. i can't remember calls i can't remember calls very I well am bad with but that too. uh i love his pack that he has and i think for what he is doing the pack that he's making there is fantastic and um, I considered getting one, but it's not really what I needed, like for what I do. And I thought about making just a, a whole entire kit that I can just throw in my car and uh, keep my 817 or 818 in. So this has the uh, TPA 817 oh, yeah. uh, frame from a pack frame from Armalock. Mm -hmm. And I bought one of those. Actually, one of my readers reached out to me when he found out I was interested. He said, hey, I'll sell you mine. So I bought his. And I'm trying to set this bag up to be, it fits it perfectly. Like actually, I've I got it here that. with me too. Yeah. And like, it just, it fits it perfectly. And so it holds it in. In fact, I accidentally, when I was uh, getting this bag out to to show it, I had held it up like this upside down. And I was like, oh man, that's so awesome that it like stays in there because the, uh, uh, you know, it has like a Velcro strap that goes across the top of the, of the radio. So um, and I, I like this. So I'm planning to make sort of a quick deploy radio system out of this. I'm still experimenting and playing with it and tinkering with it. It's just something to do, you know, uh, I, I enjoy doing this. I like packs. So the the question was, what was that company again for the bag that you're showing right now? It's uh, let me pull it back up here. It's CP Gear Tactical. I don't know if you can see that on the screen or not, I see, but it's I can um, see it. You can find it at cpgear.com. And this is their, I think it's called an airman bag or a flight bag. Uh, it's, but it's great for this. And there's plenty of room to put like a full kit in there. I mean, you can put your antenna and everything in that. Uh, there's plenty of room. And I actually got this during like a Black Friday sale that they had. And after the sale and free shipping, and the US dollar was really strong against the Canadian dollar, I got this for like $60 which is a really, really good price for something that's like kind of handmade, you know, something that's made, um, you know, by a smaller company. Because a lot of the packs we're talking about, they're, you know, they can be pretty expensive and pricey. So, um, yeah. I will uh, really quickly, let's pull up Tom Bin. Oh, we got a super chat. Uh, try this guy, the Hidden Woodsman. He makes bags, the Hidden Woodsman. I like the <coughs> name of that. 
Uh, thank you, Chris Jonah, for the super chat. And B. Murphy yeah. asks, I think somebody mentioned a couple of times Duluth Pack. Have you ever used Duluth? I haven't used them, but I knew I do know about them. Uh, I haven't used them yet, though. Uh, they are, uh, but they have a pretty good reputation for being really rugged packs. Mm -hmm. So uh, the handy little I... thing is seventy five dollars, mm -hmm. which is not unreasonable considering the amount of storage you get. Which uh, there's belt loops on the side and D links, and then when you open it up, you got just a ton of stuff. And this is the colors they have right now. They change them a lot. They um they're constantly updating their colors because they're constantly moving through different colors all the time. And you almost have to mm -hmm. wait for your favorite. Like I really like orange, yellow, and blues. So I have a yellow and a blue, and I'm probably gonna get an orange eventually, or what they call like halicon or something like that. But what were you gonna say? Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, their their stuff is fantastic. And they uh especially since I think the pandemic and everything, the you have to go on there and look and see what they have. They'll tell you not only what they have in stock, but what they plan to have in stock soon, what's mm -hmm. in production, because they do these in batches. Right. But I can tell you that like you'll open up a Tom Ben bag. I, I remember the first time, the first real bag I bought was that, was the uh, Synapse 25. Oh. And I paid a lot for it. And I thought, man, I hope this is worth the money. And I got it. And I was looking through it. And I thought, I feel like I got a really good deal because the craftsmanship is unparalleled. Like Red Ox is the same way, you know, you buy their stuff, you're not going to find like loose, you know, strings and um, uh, thread or anything like that in there. You know, they double stitch everything. It's done really well. It's really nicely tailored and it just does what it's supposed to. I mean, they're, they're fantastic. Uh, okay. So Amham48 says, yeah. come on, these packs are ridiculously expensive. Yes, they are. I don't think mm -hmm. anybody is, is doubting that, they but are. that's kind of the point is that, um, those all I think all these bags, pretty much all of them, I know Tom Ben is uh, guaranteed for life. So you yep. off and, and Peak Design, the ones that the camera bags I use are all guaranteed for life. There, there's a, a reason why you buy a more expensive bag. It's it's quality and durability among things yeah. like you know the capability of carrying it and being comfortable, which is my big thing amongst organization and all that stuff too. So no, I I. Uh, yeah, they're not cheap. I don't think anybody's trying to pretend they're not. They're not cheap. They're not cheap. But and and this is like my thing, you know, radios and packs, really. So I will spend money on these packs, but I could take any of these packs I've talked about today. I don't know about CP Cure Tactical. I don't know if people they're a much smaller company, but I could put these on eBay and sell them for probably 80% of the new price. Mm -hmm. I mean, really, it's after I've used them for years and years, I sold my, so I actually sold my Synapse 25 backpack because I got the sort of newer version of that one called mm -hmm. the Cynic 30. And so I sold it to buy that one through a Tom Ben forum. And, you know, the price used was still really high. So it really went forward, you know, to the, my next bag, very right. much like the ham radio stuff. Like I said, uh, we're at the, at the bottom of the hour here. Is there anything else you want to show that we haven't brought up Did I, was there a question you know, I, I missed because I, I i know you brought a lot of stuff with you and i i, I want to make sure we we hit all of it we hit the modular well uh size and bags loadouts because so i i think you're and and i guess this is this just goes to kind of being a little bit bougie like i guess i am when it comes to this stuff is there's a bag for every season and every reason right so like <laughs> you you you, you yes. will travel with one bag and then you go in the field with another bag and you got them all loaded out like you're kind of like me I, I i have all this stuff all paired out with different stuff like the bags literally the ones that we're looking at um those all have radios in them uh they're all radio bags you know that whole thing so you know it it um it, it's almost a hobby in itself. I don't think anybody for everybody watching us we're kind of way down the bag a uh, hole if you will. Uh you don't yeah. have to go nuts like we have, but uh take from our example our learning on them that there are there are really good bags and then there's bags it's like yeah you maybe should avoid those and and Thomas is really talking about like his his favorite bags here. So you know yeah. take that for what it's worth. Yeah. Yeah, we're not I I it's funny every time I like make a post about a bag. Mm -hmm. I always started out by saying, look, <laughs> I'm like, I'm a snob when it comes to bags. Right. You know, so th this, you're going to get some sticker shock here. But the thing is, I just, uh, I, I really, I really like bags. When I travel, that bag is like my home away from home. Right. And when I'm, uh, when I'm on a soda summit and I'm like whipped and tired because I'd, it was a longer hike than I expected going uphill is more altitude gain or something. I open that bag and it's like, 
it's like my little station up there, you know, right. and I like knowing it's there. It's going to function. If I drop it, if it rolls down something, it's going to be fine. It's going to keep my stuff dry inside. And uh, there you go, Adam. Yeah. I'm like a, I'm like a total bag snob. And I, I mean, to the point that I really struggled with looking for a bag that had a good suspension system because so many of them, uh, you know, there aren't quite as many companies doing that. And I found some American made products that I like, but they're just not what I need mm -hmm. for what I'm doing. And yep. so, but I tried and because I like to, I like to support, you know, I, I'm all about international trade and stuff, but I really like supporting American manufacturing, you know, when I can do that, I like supporting domestic manufacturing. So. Yeah. And, and there's, there's so many good, uh, what's, there's another one, something Yeti that makes these chest rigs that are really, really nice, uh, that I found out about at, yeah. uh, that the gathering with Dave Canterbury, somebody had one on, I was like, oh, this is the best, but they're like, you know, they're, they're, they're the type of bag that like he reduce he, re he releases a couple of them and then they're gone like instantly. They're almost like yeah. you have to camp out yeah. on the website to get mm -hmm. them, which that's that's kind of difficult. Tom Bin has a couple of bags they'll drop that just you know disappear immediately when uh, Boom, when he drops gone. them. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. is there, was there any? You brought a lot of stuff. I don't want to. I don't want to sell the effort short here. You, you, I know yeah, you got some you stuff know, sitting so next to you. Want to you want to talk about? I did bring a few things. So like another pack I really like. They no longer make these in the U.S. in any huge quantity, but this is Go Rock, and I really do like Go Rock stuff. Oh, I do. Too. I have their. Yeah. I, I have this Hill is the people. bullet rock. Not Yeti, Hill People. That's what I was thinking of. Thank you, Ham Radio That's Misfit. It. Hill People. I don't know why I thought yep. Yeti, but I guess a Yeti is a Hill person, so that makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> it's all the same. It's all the same, right? Yeah. So I really love, like, I like Go Rock stuff because they're really structured bags. And the the GR1 is one of my favorite all-time just rucksacks. It's a, it's a great one. Mm -hmm. And it, it is also one that fits in that magical class of being a large personal carry on. It works with any flight I've ever taken and I can easily pack for a week in that thing. And I love it. And I've taken, I've taken it out many, many times on, uh, you know, different activations and things. I just think, so I guess my thing that I would kind of close with is you don't have to buy like an American made cottage industry no. bag, like we've talked about. But if you buy a bag, buy a good one because you don't want one that's going to fail in the field. Get one that has good reviews. If you know, get one that's well known so that and, and put a little more money into it. If you think about your radios, even the cheapest radios I have are a couple hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. But a lot of them, like, you know, my KX2, that's a that's a pricey piece of kit, you know, that's in my bag. And it's OK to spend a bit on a bag to have one that's not going to fail you in the field, that's going to keep your gear dry, that's going to feel good when you're taking it out, that fits you right, and and can take a little punishment. Because I'm not easy on my radios or my bags. You know, when I go out, I buy them, and I'm like, this is meant for the outdoors, it's going to be in the outdoors. Absolutely. Uh, your mention of Go Ruck is a really good point to remind people also that the Go Ruck, like rucking, they're putting like metal plates in them to go mm -hmm. do a hike. So the padding on those straps is really good. I have a, a Go Ruck bag with a 40 pound plate in it. And it's really comfortable to carry that really, really plush padding. Um, so it is. you uh, as an EDC bag where you're probably carrying way less than 40 pounds most of the time. Mm -hmm. They work really, really well for that. And then that slide in pouch works great for a, a laptop. There were a couple. Uh, oh, yeah. Dave Canterbury also. Yeah, for sure. Uh, so Hill People gear is obviously what I mentioned. There's a couple of things. I'm going to I'm going to pull it over to me for a second because I remember somebody asking about Molly. Sure. Uh, so somebody was asking about bags that have Molly on it. So this is actually the uh, KX2 bag. And there are Molly straps on the side, and I've attached a 511 a tactical first aid pouch to the side, which I end up using for like batteries or whatever. And I also attached a, a mobile antenna mount to it on the the little plastic placard there. But yeah, there, there's these little Molly straps, and I've got it all woven up there. So yeah, I, I I put little admin bags and stuff like that on Molly Molly bags. Do you ever do that, Thomas? Would, yeah, would you have Molly actually. Bags? Uh... That's one of the really big selling points of that THE pack EDC is it is just like covered in Molly on the sides, on the bottom, on the front. Mm -hmm. So like I can actually take like a like a, a sleeping bag or a tent and attach to the bottom of it with Molly. I've taken I will show you really quickly. <laughs> Do one more. Please, screen, please. Uh, yeah, take, yeah, absolutely. Uh, 
I'm telling you, I people you are digging it. Christmas. People are digging this. I, I, there's a lot of people who are like, I okay. thought I was the only one who was a bag snob. <laughs> or, <laughs> you're you're not alone. You're not, you're not alone. alone. <laughs> you're not alone. <laughs> so this uh, this pack right here, where the the QCX Mini, this QRP Lex QCX Mini, is sitting on a little pack, and this is like sort of an orders pouch or something with Spec Op brand. And this has Molly on it. And it's so easy for me to attach that to the outside of another pack. So if oh, I actually just want my radio pack out, just like you did with your KX2 pack, yeah. it makes it so easy to take that. And this is really my kit for my uh, QCX Mini. It, everything fits in here except for the throw line. And this is the small, this is the small Tom Ben tray. Uh, and it fits 25 meters of two millimeter throw line. Plus this one has a 12 ounce weight in it, but. I think I've changed that to a 10 ounce weight uh, recently, but it all fits in there very easily. Oh, I love that. That's the yep. great thing about these little QRP radios too. So so make sure you go sub to Thomas. Links are in the description. I think I didn't put your uh, Twitter, which I'll, I'll, I'll rectify after the show, but you know, you post stuff like this on your Twitter and whatnot. And this is, I can't tell you how helpful pictures like this are on the internet. So You've got you're showing that bio no three amp hour, which is a fantastic battery for lightweight mm -hmm. QRP. You got mm -hmm. your pack tenna there from George. You got your Weaver throw yep. line, and and everything's all right there. You can look at it at a moment's notice, and you can pretty much suss it out, except for that key. That key we probably don't know who makes that. What what is that key exactly? Do you know? That is that's an N zero SA key, and that's one he did in a very limited production. Oh run, yeah, yeah. Uh, a couple of years ago, it's a, what he called a DeSoto key or something informally. Mm -hmm. But now you can get that same key, basically the same design, a, but a, a, just slightly different. It's got some three D printed parts to it through CW Morris, and it's called the SP four, and it's mm -hmm. an excellent, excellent key. And actually, uh, uh, you know, Adam's here, so I was just um, going to say, Adam, uh, makes Jonathan, version of this, yeah. He does. And he actually, so a friend of mine, Jonathan, and it's KM4, and I can't remember his last, I can't remember your suffix, Jonathan. I just worked him park to park today, actually, uh, with my little AX1 antenna. But uh, he actually 3D printed one of those for me of Adams that that kind of looks like the uh, palm uh, key, the little small key mm -hmm. that uh, collapses. Yep. Yeah. And I'm going to be taking that out. And it's such a cool key. I really do like that. Yeah. Uh, I so you know i uh anyway I, thomas has a lot of pictures like these <laughs> which are really really cool because uh as hams we're looking for more reasons to spend more money oftentimes <laughs> so so i'm gonna uh we got yeah you know, we're, we're a bit over time but i'm gonna show some of the ones that are on my desk and i'm gonna i'm gonna get uh thomas's reactions to uh to my thoughts here so i'll get him in here in a second here hold on let all me, right let me zoom you in uh let me literally zoom you in because you're on Zoom. But uh, this is these these are my kind of grab and go. I, I will mention this just because somebody had asked about hip bags. Uh, I carry my stickers and business cards and QSL cards, and I got my little mini fountain pen in here. I've crammed radios in here. Uh, right now, it's rocking my my Rico GR2 camera oh, nice. that I I usually take stills with. I'm a big fan of Gossamer gear generally for for all kinds of of camping gear and whatnot. They're but good. They're, they're little hip bag. It's got this back zip, and that's where all the flat pack stuff goes, like QSL cards and stickers and all that stuff. So that there's that. So my Tom Bins, uh, this is probably the least loaded out because it's it's probably the simplest. It just has the the pack tenna in it, and it's sporting the uh, the LNR five band. Oh, it, oh, you have a five band. Mm hmm. Yeah. So I've got the, the five band with the with I don't know what happened to that 3D print, but it works. And that goes in the hey, bottom. Protects it. Yeah, it goes in the bottom section. And there's a pack tenna above that. And uh, and then next, I love it. Th this is purely for the flex here, uh, Thomas. This is a. <laughs> uh, oh, um, you shouldn't show that. You know that that should be illegal, right? You got that on the black market, didn't you? I uh, so <laughs> I, I I'm not going to mention how I got it necessarily, but um, mm -hmm. if you noticed this year, the Friedrich Schaven show uh, went off. Mm -hmm. You heard about that, right? Yeah. Guess guess who had a booth? Palm. Really? Yeah. There's still really? there are still new old stock Palm paddles. 
Uh, and nice. and and here's here's another one. Oh, nice. Yeah, I don't so think I've ever seen one of those in person. Actually, yeah, this is this is wild. This is a, a straight key. It, oh, it's crazy. Um, but yeah, so they're still available, but you literally have to send someone to Germany to go to Friedrichshafen to get it. <laughs> uh, so this is the packing cubelet, as they mm -hmm. call it. I've always wanted one of those. And it it has the little D-rings for like a hip, uh, you know, not a hip, like a, a crossbody. And I attached the little Tombin lanyard and a glow mm -hmm. indicator. I think this is like county com. Mm -hmm. And in that, this is probably my most uh, grab and go so this is the, what is this? This is the Radio Adventure Gear key. You've you've used this one, right? Oh, Don't yeah. you have one of these? I haven't used it. No, I haven't yet. But I've been I've been thinking about getting one of those um, just it, because you know. Yeah, it, <laughs> it, it's like a. It's also like a a pico or not a pico a palm paddle. And yeah. the the in uh, Sony recorder that oh, everybody yes. loves. Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. Um. They hold so much. Tom Ben things, they really do kind of defy physics. Uh, you can put a lot of stuff in a Tom Ben bag. Yeah, and and I I do I do like these little Maxpedition EDC bags. Maxpeditions are nice. These mm -hmm. it's it's really I have several. small. And you can fit just a ton of stuff in here. So I've got the yeah. uh the three S lipo yeah. with Andersons mm -hmm. on it. Uh, a bit of split wire for running the the tuner that I have, a nice. headphone set and a volume control, which you may know where I'm going with this one. Yes, I do. And a, a the 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 very special power plug, which is unlike other power plugs, and a yep, little jumper. It's really small. Yeah, that all gets shoved into this guy. So that's your antenna power. Um, we already covered the key. And that mm -hmm. goes in that guy. And then we've got two more items. And that's the uh the t the Oh yeah. You've got the 3D. same case. There's your there's your three. I do. That's uh oh, even I, have the same color filament on our, I, uh, yeah, seriously. our cases. That literally is because of Adam. He found that and said, Hey, uh <laughs> go go check out the, the Facebook page because they've there's a guy selling. He was selling both the three band and the, the and the Elecraft tuner. So I got both of them. Oh on one, man! One, uh, yeah. I got pretty lucky on that. Somebody asked about the recorder. Gosh. This is the Sony. What is this? It is. They've been making that same line for a while. It is the ICDPX. 470 px 470. I think it's like sixty bucks or. or less than that even and it's it's usb yeah. so you just go on the side of your your computer with it it runs on a couple of triple a's and i have an extra audio cable to go in between my headphones and the radio so that mm -hmm. you can listen to it. it it's it's really quite good like the this whole little kit is is a little fantastic thing and it, and it fits in this little yeah this little bag um which then you can take this which is what i do as i take this and i throw it into another bag where if i've got enough time which I generally do when I sneak away from the family or wherever we're going, and I'll set up a, a radio or whatever really quickly. Because the the other one though, <laughs> um, wire antennas take a little bit longer to set up. This is for all the the dads mm. in the room, or, or I guess the significant others who find who who explore free time when they can at family events. I will give this is where I will give the nod to the AX1, the Elecraft AX1. You right. you and I were talking about that before and, and I think you mentioned it too mm -hmm. when we were we were talking about the bag. That is a very fast antenna to set up. Incredibly oh, fast. So mm -hmm. I, I was at a I was fishing with the kids at the pier. I got I, I caught a couple of fish. I got them all uh I got them all lined up. They got all baited. We're all good. They're on the pier. I literally had the KX2 out of the bag, out of that little low pro bag. I had the AX1 up. I was I put the radial off the side of the pier, like going into the water kind of thing. And I was on the air. I was doing like single sideband contacts with that off the pier because I'm right on the salt water. So yep. why not? I was killing it. And so that for that, yep. like the AX1, it, there are many times where the AX1 is just the right amount of antenna, particularly uh, as we're going to the high side of the solar cycle. Fantastic. Yep. Fantastic. Yeah, I've I have never had a failed AX1 activation. 
I have, it has always way overperformed uh, when yeah. I've gone to the field, usually with like a contact per minute and which is about as fast as you can go in POTA because we're not running like 35 words a minute, short contacts, like a contest or something. Mm -hmm. And today I was using it on the 17 meter band. I even tuned it up to the 15 meter band as well. And, uh, but I was going to 17 to avoid the contest that's going on this weekend and made all my contacts. It was one of the slower activations I've had uh, with the AX1, but I still did it all in like 35 minutes. And I think I got two park to parks and uh, the and another 10 just contacts. Normally it, I can, I literally can set up and take down that antenna in a total of three minutes. So if I've it's, got yeah. 20 minutes to do an activation, that leaves me with 17 minutes of on the air time. And I can get 10 contacts on a normal day easily in 17 minutes. So that's my life. My life is all about just really quick activations. I usually don't have time to do really long ones. Yeah, the and, and you know, for the CW folks, obviously you're going to be a little bit more effective with the AX1. Um, it is it's for convenience it's hard to beat that thing it really is because mm -hmm. the kx2's got Very. the tuner it just sorts itself out as long as you got that radial wire out you're pretty much good to go mm -hmm. uh we got a couple of questions which we'll jump on what are we at for time we'll probably take five minutes of questions here somebody asked what where do i keep my toilet paper uh i put my toilet paper in a ziploc bag and i usually also mm -hmm. be, i I, there's always this long running joke of um, why is it when we go on um, on travel that we pack like three pair of underwear for every day? Do we think we're just going to mm -hmm. have diarrhea the entire trip? Is that why we pack so much underwear? <laughs> uh, so I, I do throw a, an extra pair of underwear and socks in the toilet paper bag for some reason. And that I've, I've got one in the truck and pretty much in all the go bags. I'll usually just take like mm -hmm. whatever a uh, half a roll of toilet paper is we use it and just fold it in, you know, squish it and throw it in a bag. Um, Let's see. A couple of oh, we got a, uh, another super chat there from Sock Eating Golden. Uh, I don't. That's an interesting name. Thank you both for your channels, <laughs> bringing a new generation of hams to the hobby. Seventy three from W eight SEG. Right Thank on. You. So, any questions? We'll take them. Uh, I, I do you have the forty meter extender on the AX one? Yeah, and I find it's really effective. So. You know, the AX1 is all about if you're the DX, mm -hmm. that's where it really magically works. But I, I yeah. did two park to parks today and I didn't announce them as park to parks. I just contacted these two guys and uh, and one was in Nebraska. The other was in uh, Jonathan was in, I think, Colorado from North Carolina with five watts. Maybe it was 10 watts at that point. I can't remember, but I think it was five watts. And uh, it works really well for that. It also gives, I think, one of the magic things with it, and I, I would be really curious using it on the West Coast, because here, my normal propagation footprint for, say, 20 or 40 meters, mm -hmm. the AX1 basically does that mm -hmm. if you've deployed the counterpoise correctly and stuff, but it also does sort of NIVIS contacts, so NVIS stuff. So I'll work states right around me on 20 meters on a day when there's no flaring or anything like that that normally would open up that. And that's one of the really cool things because it so it kind of opens up a bigger audience in a way, mm -hmm. oddly enough, even though it's compromised. I like that. Uh, it, it's it's a cool antenna to have in the kit for sure. Uh, something happened with mm -hmm. Zoom. Got to love Zoom. They got a question. How do you all store your bags? How do you store your bags? <laughs> so I actually in my office, I wear them all I like I just them. in the off hours. I, I just, just put them all on. I just carry them all. I put a bag in a bag in a bag in a bag. <laughs> I actually just kind of, I hang them up. I have them like hung up most of the ones that I use regularly. And then I keep a box with uh, some of the ones that are on the back burner for now. Mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, but I treat them all really nicely. I I found, uh, so two things. I found, you know, U-bolts, you know, like a U-bolt that's threaded on two ends. Mm -hmm. And I, I popped a bunch of mm -hmm. holes in my, uh, in my closet door in my office. And I put the U-bolts in and then I got uh, like double clipped or or s beaners or stuff like that clip yeah. them onto it and then hook the bags to it but then i found on amazon they have adhesive hooks that have a big plastic adhesive backing so what i was doing what i do now is i take and they're empty the bags are empty i take mm -hmm. the bag and i'll i'll put it on the hook 
and I'll take the adhesive strap off and then I'll find out where like it lines up with the rest of the bags and I'll slap the adhesive on it. And I have my whole door like kitted out with bags. I'm like Batman for bags right oh, now because I can just walk up and pull one off. In fact, I have images of it. I'll post it on the after chat if you guys join us over there uh, so you guys can see awesome. it on the, on the Discord. But it, it and you get like... um. It's like 14 adhesive hook things, and they work on, like, painted mm -hmm. surfaces, walls, doors, whatever, and I'll just, boop, put it on there. Because most bags are under five pounds, and that'll hold that up no problem. It, it, they're really, really pretty cool. Yeah, the key thing, if you live in a state that's humid, is to not put it – you want to keep your bags in a climate-controlled area or something yeah. so they don't get moldy or something. You know, that's one thing you've got to be really careful of with bags. Somebody actually said earlier, do you do, you do anything for bag funk? For bag funk? I'll wash bags. So, yeah. you know, most of these manufacturers I've been talking about, they even have instructions of how to wash their bags. And they can take that. So I'll just wash them. Because bags do get a funk. Oh, they do. Uh, here's a good one from Matt62. Have you ever attempted to use the AX1 without a tuner? I have had great success yeah. with the AX2 on a tripod, no tuner. Right. So I have. Uh, the So the AX2, both the AX2 and the AX1, especially on 20 meters, are near resonant. You have to, I would always take something to tweak that antenna though. If you go to the field, you're really relying on it. So what I did one year with the AX1, I wanted to pair it with the ICOM IC705. And of course it has no internal ATU. So I needed to figure out a way to make sure that I could have 20 meters operational because I was going down to the coast to Hatteras Island and I wanted to do the AX1 with 20 mm -hmm. meters attached to the 705. At my house in the mountains at about like 3,300 feet above sea level, I built a capacity hat with just four wires oh. and an alligator clip in the middle. And I attached it to the top of the, because uh, I can't get mine, my AX2 to just be naturally resonant all the way right? Uh, without using the ATU, not at my house. Mm -hmm. I put that capacity hat on. I got a perfect one-to-one -one match. I took it to a different place, set it up. Perfect one-to-one -one match. That's cool. Go down to the coast. It was like a, a crazy high SWR down the coast mm -hmm. because these compromised antennas, they are really, really sensitive to uh, body capacitance, to height off ground, to terrain, all kinds of other things that all it's sort of like a loop antenna. They're just very finicky about yeah. their bandwidth and where that is. So the capacity had all I had to do was like bring it down the antenna whip a little bit further. Mm -hmm. And then I got a one to one match with it. That's so I would smart. say build one of these. It takes four minutes. It's so easy to do. And you can definitely operate 20 meters. I don't think you could do it on the AX1 with 40. I don't know if you could do it before. I've never tried it with 40. I don't think you could do it with 17 or 15 meters without using the ATU. Uh, that's probably well, because it's got that switch on it. Uh, or the, the, the switch yeah. gives you like a split between 15 and 17. It's not really all the way into That's one right. Arm, right. Yeah. Yeah. I do want to show it near. Since, since the AX1 got mentioned, I do want to give a huge mm -hmm. shout out. This is a, a super utility item. Even if you don't have an AX1, mm -hmm. you may want to go buy this. Elecraft has this tripod mount that's mm -hmm. double ended BNC with the ground screw. This thing is awesome awesome i can't tell you how useful this thing is it's it's double-ended bnc with a threaded tripod mount and a little knurled screw for for a radial wire or or multiple radios i have used yep. this so many times on so many antennas fantastic i'm sure you got one too right is that what you went to go reach oh for yeah right now? so so this is this is my maxpedition um i think it's called the fatty uh edc yep. pouch and this is where I keep my AX1 kit. Now, I actually bought a second AX1 so it could just live directly with my KX2 all the time. But I've paired this now, paired the AX1 with like, just the, I'll have these videos coming out very soon, actually. So I've paired it with the Pentec TR45L. I've paired it with the K2. I've paired it with the Mission RG01. I've paired it in the past. I've paired it with the X6100. I try to pair it with a bunch of different radios to see how it works. In this pack, though, so I have my, this is my little capacity hat. This may be hard to see, but I just spread this out into like an X shape. This is just probably, I don't know, 14 gauge solid conductor wire. I don't even know if it's that thick. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's that thick. It's probably about like uh, 16 or 18 uh, gauge. 
with a little alligator clip on it. And this is what I clipped to the top of it, of the four foot telescoping whip. I have the little tripod mount right here. And both of my counterpoises, the short one for 20 and 17 is in a little bag in here. And I also have the longer one, the 33 or whatever foot one for the 40 meter band. And so I have like my 40 meter band uh, coil and everything else. I also bring with me uh, something to tweak this uh, bipod. Uh, yeah, it can of, get a little funky. Bipod, so yeah, yeah, it can get a little funky, and you have to pull it apart, uh, fix a little nut inside. And I did that today, actually, when I was in the field. I kind of tightened it up when I was out there. I also carry a little tiny. This is like a tripod I bought in, like, yeah, I yeah, think yeah. Annecy, France. Oh, nice. ages ago. They have these everywhere. And uh, and I use this if I just yeah. want to set it on a table and pair it with another radio. Oh, I love it with that little tripod adapter. That's beautiful. Oh but man, this is a great pouch. I love. Well, Thomas, <laughs> I, I think uh, we've we've got one more question, and I want to make sure we answer it, and then we're going to wrap things up. And, and join us in the after chat. Discord link is in the description. Do you have any trouble with uncovered or unflapped zippers in the rain? That's or a really good you? question. So I don't have many packs that I take out that I would go into the rain that are uncovered. Mm -hmm. The the um, Red Ox bag, these Vizline YKK10 zippers, mm -hmm. these are not protected in any way. Right. And hypothetically, if you took it out in the rain, I've had this pack in the rain in like light rain it, and it didn't penetrate it. But if you had it in a really heavy rain, it'd probably penetrate it. Right. The Spec Ops bag, what I like about it is they actually have a rain flap over each zipper, mm -hmm. like just kind of the old school flap to protect it. And the Tom Ben bags all have kind of sealed zippers that prevent water coming in. Those are made in Seattle. So I guess they assume that, you know, if you're taking that thing around Seattle, you better be able to keep it uh, dry. So I haven't had any issues with that, but I always worry about water penetration in a bag. And when I'm using something that I'm uncertain about, or I'm going out in really bad weather, sometimes I will take something like one of my little uh, Pelican cases or something like that. You know, I'll take like, this is kind of an extreme example but this oh, is yeah. like a i need to take this sticker off this is a nanook case nice but i can take this and throw it in a bag yeah and this has the tr35 this actually has a full this has a full radio kit in it as well less the i don't think i have the no i don't i haven't put a oh I yeah a I, I know that in that radio yeah well, uh, we're already getting comments. Well, now we're down the antenna line. So many questions, but this is a great stream. Bill, we're going to have Thomas back again, and maybe we'll talk about all of his field radio back. kits because he's got a bag for every kit. He's got waterproof boxes for his kit, and you know he's got antennas to go with it. So we'll definitely have Thomas back. I'm just glad there's a. I'm glad there's a place I can nerd out on this. So. Oh, dude, this is the best. Like, I, th I think this is a cathartic release for a lot of people because this is a lot of people watching. There's <laughs> just so we could talk about dumb bags i mean i i <laughs> as someone who i have i always carry a backpack i always have a backpack mm -hmm. or or a crossbody me bag too. always always are, am carrying that and i know a lot of people are like me because i don't want to load my pockets down and all that stuff so uh no this this is That's fantastic right. thomas again links in the description for everything thomas is doing uh k4swl on youtube swling.com qrpeer.com also on the ham radio workbench now among uh what was mentioned the shortwave the shortwave recordings that you have again just the so shortwave people... the shortwave radio audio archive is the name of it it's at awesome. shortwavearchive.com awesome. and i will i will be at ham convention this year i'm planning to go there this year and you can probably probably the easiest way to find me if you want to stop by and say hi or to curse me uh, will be at the uh ham radio workbench booth i'll be spending quite a bit of time there i, I know, didn't want to out on. i didn't uh, want to out you for for going to uh I, I always have to be cognizant of that i always think like oh yeah everybody you know you, you tell people you're going why not but i i i mentioned you're going to a ham fest so i didn't want to say which one it was so i apologize for but <laughs> i I'm, I'm super glad to be able to meet you in person i will be there of course so uh, Thomas, it's been wonderful talking with you. He's going to join us on the after chat for a little bit, but we got to we got to wrap things up so we can get over there. So if you have uh, more in depth questions or you want to know more about his loadout on stuff, and uh, K six A or K is probably going to be in the house as well, and and a myriad of other hams. So feel free to join us over there. It is a 
a live open discussion on on text and voice to answer ham radio questions. That's why we do it every Saturday. So link in the description to the Discord, the Ham Radio Crash Course Discord, and that's how you get in on it. Thomas, a thousand thank yous again for joining us. This is a lot it's of my fun. pleasure. Uh, justifying to my wife, why do I buy all these bags? Well, honey, because <laughs> there's lots of reasons to have different bags. Just That's Thomas, right. Thomas knows what I'm talking about, of yeah. course. <laughs> all right, <laughs> hang, hang tight. Uh, I'll be back with you in a second, okay. Thomas, to get you over the Discord. And I want to say a big uh, reminder and thank you to everybody who supports the channel, my channel here on YouTube, uh, on Patreon. So thank you to all the patrons. I do appreciate all of you. A uh, bit of a shout out to the brew crew. I don't know where my red mug is, so who can get the uh, the da did it did 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 da did. Oh, what's that spell? Somebody sent me this, and I, I really do appreciate it. So shout out to the brew crew. Um, but we have uh, patron picks coming up, newsletter coming up. Uh, the vote for that, I got to drop the vote here. This week, actually, we'll be dropping it probably tomorrow. And I'm going to be doing a patrons-only chat here probably at the end of this month or the beginning of next month. Uh, we've done this. We, we did this a lot during COVID. And now that we're out of COVID, I got a lot busier. And so I apologize to all the patrons because we need more, uh, more of those because it's a lot of fun. So don't worry. We're going to make that happen in the future. Uh, and I just, you know, appreciate all the support. I am uh, very happy we were able to make this work with with Thomas. He's a he's a busy guy. He's you know he's got a lot going on. Obviously, from what you saw, and uh, we we both have just a super love of bags though. So this was just got to be a uh, I don't know. At least for me, this was a lot of fun. I hope you all enjoyed it too. But uh, yeah, so everybody in the chat, thank you so much, and seventy threes to you all, and a big hearty thank you to all the patrons whose whose names, at least for the producers, are right here. But a big thank you to all the patrons and all the YouTube members. Reminder: there's the shout out to the home brewman right there. Appreciate you. Uh, reminder: we're going to go to Discord. I will be live streaming that to YouTube, but it will be uh, a different live stream. I'm going to end this, and then we're going to go over there. So. If you'd like to follow along with the fun, the best way to get in on that is to join the Discord right now. Because it's going to take me five to ten minutes to flip all of this over and get back live again. And then you'll hear the audio from everybody on the Discord. All right. Thanks so much, everybody. I will talk to you later. 73.